Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, my faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. We've saved you a seat right here in the front. Get your Bible, get something to take some notes with. Come on into the classroom with us, and let's push everything else aside for these few moments. And... Um, let God speak to us through His Word and by His Spirit. Uh, the world all around you is really loud and noisy, and there's all these voices with something to say, and so many of them are negative, and they are speaking defeat and death and darkness and discouragement. Let God speak into your life with light and life. It'll just cause your, your spirit to just blossom and, and bloom uh, with uh, victory. Let's release faith and ask the Lord for just exactly what we need for today. Father, in Jesus' name, we all agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing that teaches, that reveals and reminds. Uh, we're asking you for answers. And you know the illustrations, the scriptures, the words, the way that touches our spirit and helps us to understand what we didn't see and enables us to receive what we hadn't received. And we'll give you all the praise and glory for all the good things that happened in our life. We'll tell anybody that'll listen that you did it and you're worthy of the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you look again in our great textbook to... Uh, Matthew, the ninth chapter, we began a few weeks back on a series we're calling Faith for Healing. And uh, we're studying the individual cases of healing in Jesus' ministry. There are only about 20 uh, individual cases where we're told some detail about who got healed and what happened. We looked uh, at the first one was the healing of the leper. And uh, in each one of these, you'll see numerous truths, of course, but you'll see a, a standout truth, an emphasis in each one of them. And on the healing of the leper, we see God's will emphasized. The, the man said, Lord, I know you can heal me if you will. And Jesus said, I will. Be clean. And uh, if it was his answer and the Lord had it recorded for all of us, why wouldn't it be our answer? That if he told him, I will, why would he tell us something different? No, his I will stands. And uh, then we looked at the healing of Peter's uh, mother-in-law. And we, uh, a great truth we saw there was that Jesus rebuked the fever that was bothering uh, this woman. And he, he commanded it to leave her. He's talking to a fever now. And the fever obeyed and left her. And that's, that's mind renewal. Uh, so many times if somebody had a running a high fever or their child was running a fever and, and they told you about it and you said, well, have you spoken to it? They might look at you in shock. What? Yeah. Did you speak to the fever? Well, I got an infection that's caused me. Have you spoken to that infection? Well, my kidney hadn't been working. Right. Have you spoken to your kidneys? If that sounds strange to you, go back and listen to the, the healing of uh, of Peter's mother-in-law, get stirred up. We, we got stirred up about it. We're still stirred up. Uh, it's, it, it's following Jesus' footsteps and doing the works that he did, that he told us we'd do if we believed in him. We're down to number three now, the healing of the paralyzed man. And this is recorded in Matthew 9, Mark 2, and Luke 5. Let's read them again. Matthew 9 and verse 1. Jesus entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed. 
And Jesus, seeing their faith, and said to the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, your sins be forgiven you. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think you evil in your hearts? For whether is easier, to say your sins be forgiven you, or to say arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up your bed, and go into your house. And he arose and departed to his house. But when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Let's go to Mark 2 and read Mark's account of this. Mark 2 and verse 1. Now, I know that if you were with us uh, yesterday, we read these, and you might say, well, Brother Keith, I remember we read those yesterday. Yeah, but uh, you've eaten uh, potatoes before, and you're liable to eat them again. Is that right? (laughs) Why? Because what fed you last year is not feeding you today. You need to eat again. And uh, these words are anointed. They are hand-picked by the Holy Spirit, out of all the many, many, many people that got healed, these are handpicked by the Spirit of God. And uh, there are things we haven't seen out of this. If you'll look for them, they'll open up to you. In Mark 2, in verse 1, again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. So word got out that he was there. And when word got out, straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And what do you do when a a crowd gathers like that? You preach. (laughs) He preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come near to him for the press, They uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, Son, your sins be forgiven you. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason you these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Your sins be forgiven you, or to say, Arise, and take up your bed, and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, He said to the sick of the palsy, I say to you, arise and take up your bed and go your way to your house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed and went forth before them all insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. And then let's look over to to Luke 5 at Luke's account of this. We'll just take this verse by verse here in Luke 5, beginning in about verse 17. But we see from these other accounts that Jesus had been away ministering and he came back to Capernaum, which was his, his base of operations. That's, um, they called that home, if you will, during this period of time. And when the people heard that he had come back home, crowds showed up at the house. And the scripture says in verse 17 here, it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. So when these people all showed up, why did they come? Why are they there? Well, uh, many of them need help. Uh, Many of them want want and need answers. Uh, They're looking for something. Um, And so what did Jesus do? He preached the word to them. Are there answers in the word? 
Yes, there is. Somebody says, well, I, what if you needed healing? Well, you need faith, <laughs> right, to receive your healing. Where are you going to get your faith? From hearing the anointed word. And we see on, uh, we looked at this last week, that uh, on multiple occasions it said they came to hear him and to be healed. To hear him and to be healed. And we see that just with Jesus teaching and preaching in the house, the result is that the power of the Lord was there to heal. Now this is before uh, they brought in the man that was paralyzed. The power was there before they broke through the roof. And the power to heal wasn't just there for the paralyzed man. It was there for them. All them in the house. And yet, you'd have to add to the scriptures to say that the people in the house got healed other than the man that came in from the outside. Is it true that the power can be available for something and it not happen? It is. It happens too often. In Hebrews, if you'd notice here, you're there in Luke, but just look over in the book of Hebrews, I believe it's the second chapter. It talks about the gospel. And this is what he was preaching. Um, in Luke, I'm, I'm moving a little bit too, uh, too quickly. Hold your place in Hebrews. But in Luke 9, 6, it said that Jesus, when they departed, he went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. That was Luke 9, 6. Preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Why would you say it like that? Preaching the gospel and healing. And this is not the only place this occurs. You'll find this uh, several places in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that they preached and healed. Preached and healed. Preaching and healing. Why? Well, what did they preach? The gospel. <laughs> Another way of saying gospel is good news. They preach the good news. Well, what would that have to do with getting healed? Well, faith comes by hearing. Is there anything in the good news about healing? This is something that has been largely lost among many uh, millions, actually, of church-going people. Uh, many people, when they hear the word gospel, they think of one thing, being saved from sin and saved from hell. And thank God that's true. But that's not the whole message. We, we studied this uh, back a few weeks ago, how that when Jesus would tell people, your faith has saved you, or he'd say, your faith has made you whole, it was the same word sozo. Uh, the Greek word sozo is translated healed as well as saved. Same word. And, and Jesus used the word, same word if he told somebody your faith has saved you, if he's talking about them being forgiven from their sins, as if he said your faith has made you whole from a physical problem. He used the same word. Well, it's, it's not hard to understand. When you say, I'm saved, there's a blank goes after that word. You're saved from what? <laughs> right? I'm, I'm saved from, thank God, saved from the punishment of my sin. I'm saved from the punishment of hell. I'm saved from being rejected and condemned and judged. But you can also be saved from sickness. Saved from oppression, saved from uh, mental problems and depression, saved from poverty and lack. I mean, when you said, I'm saved, you said a mouthful. You said, right? You said a lot. I'm saved from what? Well, we've been saved. We've been redeemed from all the curse of the law, Galatians says. And that includes all kinds of things. 
But in Hebrews, the second chapter, if you'd look there, he tells us that um, Hebrews 4 and 1, excuse me, 2, 2, Hebrews 2 and 1, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we've heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. What's he talking about? What, why would that affect you if you let it slip? For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression uh, and disobedience received a just recompense and reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Um, in the fourth chapter, which, which I was getting to eventually here, the fourth chapter in the second verse, he says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached uh, did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. We know part of the room where Jesus was preaching that day was a, a, a group of ministers. There were Pharisees, scribes, doctors of the law. That'd be like our modern doctor of divinity, uh, doctorates in theology. They were uh, supposed to be experts on the scriptures and understanding the scriptures. And the scripture said that Jesus is preaching, what? The word. <laughs> and the power is there to heal, to heal them. And yet, we'd have to conclude that many of them or all of them did not benefit. Is that, that, is that what he's talking about right here? He said the gospel was preached, but the word did not profit them. The word preached did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You know, uh, I know way back in the uh, high school days, we had chemistry class. And, uh, you know, we had the uh, uh, beakers out and the Bunsen burners and all those kind of things. We're learning about different uh, elements and different gases and these kind of things. And, and one of the things they'd show you is that, you know, maybe this... Uh, this substance here is inert unless you add this to it, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just fine. You can swish it around. You can pour it out, but don't put any of this in there because you put some of this in there. Oh, man, it'll blow the bottom out of that beaker and make a big mess and set off the fire alarms and sprinklers, whatever it is. Why? Because there's, there's power in that substance, but it is inactive unless something causes it to be released. Can you see that? Something, when it's mixed with it, it releases that potent, latent energy that's been there all the time. Well, can you believe that there is power in this word? Huh? All the time, <laughs> there's power in this word. Where the word of the king is, there's power. And there's no word of God that's void of power or incapable of being fulfilled. But even though it may be proclaimed, it's, it doesn't profit, it doesn't benefit the hearer unless they take some of this amazing activator called faith. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and when you mix some faith with that power, oh boy, oh boy, that's when we see healings manifested. That's when we see deliverances manifest. That's when we see miracles manifest. But you can have the power of God, the house full of healing power, and sit there and reason and second guess and find fault and doubt and leave like there was no power there and leave without your healing, without your deliverance. And apparently a lot of people in the house, that's, what's that. that's what happened to them. 
But there was uh, one guy came in from the outside. <laughs> he didn't have any degrees in theology. <laughs> he, I don't even know if the guy could read or not. In those days, a lot of people couldn't read. I don't know what he had, but he, he didn't have a lot of things. He, he didn't even have the full use of his body. He couldn't even walk around by himself. But he had four faith friends. He had four faith buddies. I mean, there's their faith buddies are valuable. They, they're more valuable than money. Uh, he had four faith buddies that said, man, people have been, he been getting healed in Jesus' ministry, man. I think if we get down to that meeting, you could get healed. He said, yeah. They said, yeah. He said, well, what you waiting on? Let's go. Let's go. And so they scooped him up and hauled him with his little cot and mat, and they got him down to Jesus' house. But dear me, there were donkeys parked everywhere, and there were <laughs> folks everywhere. The house was full, people hanging out the windows. You couldn't even get close to the door, it said. And I'm sure they thought, oh, no, man, we came all this way. They didn't say that. That's why they're in the book. They said, nah, we come too far to go back now. We're going to get you in there one way or the other. And so even though the power was in the house to heal, apparently there's no faith being released. So there's no manifestations. But when you brought somebody from the outside that had to go to great effort to get inside, when that faith hit the ground, something happened. Oh, come on, can you see it? Somebody brought some activator. <laughs> some anointing activator. Anybody in the class got some anointing activator? If you, if you will release some anointing activator, the power is already here. The power is already in the Word. The power is already in the gospel. Can you say amen? amen? He said unto us the gospel was preached as well as to them. But the gospel or the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. We, most church going people have no problem with this uh, in the area of the new birth. They completely understand that the best uh, preachers, man or woman in the world preaching the most anointed uh, salvation message does not assure that a salvation will occur. Right? That, that a new birth will occur. Uh, and if somebody preaches the gospel uh, truthfully and correctly and there are lost people in the house, is the power there to save them? Is the power there for them to be born again every time? But let's say there were 20 people in the house that had never given their life to the Lord and they're not saved. What if all 20 did not respond to the invitation and they all leave, leave the, leave the building, leave the service, and there was no new birth that day? Does that mean it wasn't God's will? For them to be born again doesn't mean, does it mean it wasn't available or the power wasn't there? Now, see, we understand that, don't we, concerning the new birth. Well, why would we think it's so radically different concerning healing or deliverance? It is exactly the same. Can, can you see what this is building up to is when Jesus said, well, which one's easier? Right? Can you see that? Forgiveness? Our healing, because they had a problem with him uh, talking about forgiveness. Well, today it's kind of swapped. People are great on forgiveness, but they got a problem when you talk about healing. Uh, right? Well, if we could ever get it together on both of them on the same day, we'd, we'd be making some progress. Wouldn't we? But uh, just because the, there's no miracle manifest, that in no way uh, means that it wasn't God's will. Or that it was not available. How many believe Jesus was doing a good job that day preaching the word? In the house? You know he was. Yes. You, you know he was. Was he getting it right? Yes. Was he anointed? Yes. You know he was. And because of that, what did it say, verse 17 there, Luke 5, 17? The power of the Lord was there. Oh, hallelujah. When? While he's speaking, the power of the Lord is present 
to heal. It's there to heal. Hallelujah. What does that mean? That means anybody in the house can be healed right now. That's what it means. Does it mean everybody will receive? No. Not any more than everybody will receive Jesus when they hear the first part of the gospel preached. Uh, Not any more than everybody will receive forgiveness just because the price has been paid for it. The gospel can be preached, but you won't experience the power of it unless it is mixed with faith. Somebody say mixed with faith. Mixed with faith. faith. Uh, I wrote a little uh, poem thing down years ago about this. Uh, Mix faith with the power and the answer will come. Mix faith with the power and the work will be done. In a bad situation, it's a real combination. Mix them today and blow the devil away. (laughs) Somebody said, where'd you get that? I don't know. I just wrote it down. (laughs) But it seemed applicable applicable to me at the time. Mix them. Mix faith with the power. You know, you see this with the woman that had the issue of blood. Uh, when she pressed through the crowd and touched Jesus' clothes and, and, and he stopped and he said, somebody touch me. And the disciples said, what do you mean, Lord, people all around you touching you? Really? And none of them's being healed. Can you see that? Yes, well, did the power just show up when she touched him? No, the power was there. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Jesus didn't leave home without the anointing. Right? The power was there, but when somebody touched him with some activator. Oh, come on, can you see it? Touched him with some confident expectation. Oh, hallelujah. Touched him expecting something to happen that faith released the anointing. It flowed right out of him and into her. Oh, glory to God. So no, we don't need to labor about it being God's will. It is God's will. We don't need to labor about trying to get the power. The power's here. It's there in the Word. What we need to work on is getting some activator and receiving and releasing this power in our lives. And we're already out of time again today. Said out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith giving glory to God. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.